you guys have seen this before. We're headed to the airport metro. This is this is Hanny. Hanny was at the uh, hostel that we're staying at, and this is a very momentous occasion for her because this is her first morning in Asia. <laughs> she has never been in Asia before. She wants to go see Taipei 101 Tower, so uh, I'm gonna help her get downtown. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hi from London. Hi from London. <laughs> There's so much I need to tell her. So right, little let's, time. Let's get you a ticket first. This is a ticket. Yep. Um, what are some differences between London and here that you see right away? Right away? Like like your perception. So much cleaner than London underground. Let me just <laughs> let me just say that. Does it smell a little better? It's so much better. I'm always curious because I've lived in China now for ten years, so my idea of Asia is like home, you know? Mm. Yeah. So, and I've sort of, I forgot those first days. The way that my mind was and what I saw that was so weird, I don't really remember anymore because it's all normal. Mm. So to hear her give her opinion is, is interesting. She was looking out into the subway train that just came by. She was like, why are all those people wearing masks? <laughs> And I got a, I got way over the whole mask thing a long oh. time ago. But for you, it's like it's awesome. like new. Okay. <laughs> Let me know anything you see that's like really out of the ordinary. Yeah, definitely. Because it'll probably be like, oh yeah, that is out of the ordinary. What do you think of the subway here in uh, Taiwan? It's very very quiet. <laughs> very quiet. I love that there's internet connection everywhere. I think so. She was asking me. She's like, how do you how do you get over the fact that you're filming yourself? Is this nerve wracking? Everyone's just staring. Practice, practice. Yeah. Nobody's staring. No, but like when you're, when you're going on the street yeah, yeah. and you're vlogging. Go ahead. So the purpose of my trip is to go to my appointment. My appointment's at 10 o'clock. And what time is it right now? 8, Eight o'clock. So I got, I got enough time. So I'm going to take her to a Starbucks, we'll fill up on coffee, she'll go her way, and I'll go mine. We were talking about different things. Is it okay that I say? No, of course. Okay. She was like, you know, this this might be the first Somali that you've ever met, you know? Because <laughs> she says she's from Somalia, and I was like, well, that's interesting, but to me, because of her accent, she was stood out right away as, as being from the UK or London, because right away your, your accent told me uh, told me that yeah because when you get to like London and places like that it's such a melting pot of people it's different than here like for example here you look around everybody pretty much looks the same they're all Asian they're all you know have that one solid look whereas if you go to Europe your accent is what tells me where you're from you know her accent is so funny <laughs> first of all band-aids are called plasters did you know that? Band-aids are called plasters? And secondly, she was talking about how she likes, um, she likes anime. One Piece. It's called One Piece. How do you say it? One Piece. No, you didn't. What did I say? She looked at me, she's like, yeah, you know, I'm going, she's going to Japan next. And she's like, you know, they, they have this, this anime thing. I'm like, oh, I like anime. She's like, oh, do you watch Wampus? Do you see Wampus? I'm like, Wampers? What the hell is a Whomper? I think you can buy them at the convenience store. They're really good. They're chocolate with a nougat center. She's like very slowly said, one piece. One piece. Accents are funny things. I'm going to get her set up and then I will see you later. Say Bye. goodbye. Nice meeting you guys. So the place I'm going to was recommended to me by a, by a friend of the Jaya Nation. I don't think that I have a hernia at this point anymore. I just had too many people tell me it's not, so I'm, I'm forced to believe them. But I'm going there nonetheless. Maybe they'll have some interesting things to say. This will probably be the last video on this whole journey of trying to figure out what the hell's wrong with me. And I'll finally be able to uh, get back on the road. Unless this place tells me something tragic. Let's go see. I'm really curious to see if my new friend had a good time at Taipei 101. I'm always excited when I meet somebody who's doing something for the first time. And coming to Asia for the first time is, is an amazing thing. I've lost a lot of that wide-eyed, uh, 
newness that comes when you first come here and it's interesting to see somebody with that that old energy you gotta kill an hour all right let's see what they have to say 12th floor hernia center I'm learning about hernias. It's actually kind of interesting. I think that I have the potential to have a hernia even if I don't right now, down the road. And uh, the more you know, the better you are, better you are, right? So. All right, guys. I have uh, just exited the uh, hernia clinic. I have some interesting news. I watched the videos and then I was met by uh, the contact I've been talking to, his name's Glenn. The doctor, the one that does all the surgeries, he's on vacation for two more weeks, but his team was there. And the lead member of his team is a superintendent guy, an older fella with a hell of a lot of experience with regards to hernias in general. I told him my story. He asked me how tall I was. He asked me how much I weighed. And he's like, wow, you're overweight for your body type. And that was an uh, indication to him. He said, pull down your pants, let me check. And so I sat down, laid down. He took his finger. I'm gonna be graphic here because it's very interesting actually. He took his finger on my right side of my testicles and he put his finger right in the hole that there's a hole there obviously where your tubes go through like a duct that's the thing that you get in high school and you have your physical and they ask you to cough that's what they're checking for and then he put his finger on my left side and he said cough and he's taking his gloves off and he goes yep you got a hernia i kind of laughed i'm like what no you know i was expecting him to confirm what everybody else is saying that it's not no no he's, a, he's very clear you have a hernia and i said how do you know he's like you didn't hear it he says hear it no what are you talking about he said uh here lay down on the table again so i lay down on the table again and he put his finger there again and he said cough and when i did he's like listen listen closely i could actually hear it i coughed and i could hear this click click Click, click. So as the pressure was building up when you cough, obviously your body internally is under a lot of pressure and it's pushing out at whatever opening you might have. And in this case, I have an opening there and you can feel, boom, 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 boom. You can feel and hear the material in that duct pop out and back in again. When he touched it, it was sort of sore. That opening where that area is, is a little sore. It's, oh, I mean, honestly, I'd much rather know and in a very uh, understandable way be shown what's wrong with me rather than say you have a, this ambiguous issue, this CPPS is this ambiguous thing that's it's sort of this blanket thing. Yesterday I went to the doctor, they said I had CPPS. The guys, I've never been examined as thoroughly as this guy did with such a specific knowledge of the issue and he knew what he was looking for and knew what to look for and he found it on the right on the side that I have the pain in the area where where I've had this issue he found it thank you he said I don't necessarily have to get surgery right now it's not like life or death he said the reason you're feeling pain right now and the reason it's presenting itself right now is because you're overweight, and me being overweight is putting pressure on this area. And he says, you just need to lose weight. You could probably continue riding. Obviously, it could get worse. It could tear more and put me in, in sort of a problem. He's like, I don't think necessarily that you're gonna get there, not riding around Taiwan. He wasn't selling his own place. He's like, if you have an emergency, you can go and get this surgery done. There's a lot of good hospitals here in Taipei, just in case. But he's like, it's not something that's so critical right now. I did talk to the guy, Glenn, and I said, um, if I do have this surgery, 
or this procedure done after I finish the loop, I don't want to pay 4000 Hopefully we can work out something where maybe I do a, a video of the procedure and then we can, you know, work out some sort of an arrangement, you know, so that's not such a financial burden on me. But uh, I think that's very possible. I have a hernia. I've never thought I'd be so relieved to know that I have a hernia. He said a lot of the medication that the guys gave me yesterday for the CPPS is not ne not necessary because it's not that issue. He was very, very confident with the, with the diagnosis. And so there we are. I'm going to continue riding tomorrow morning, head towards Taichung. The next uh, few weeks of, of riding aren't necessarily going to be on the east coast, which is where all the big hills are, which was where all the pressure would be on that area. And I should be good to go for a while. Just take it easy. It's about lunchtime. I'm going to find a place to eat. I'm going to start thinking about getting back on the road and finish up a couple of video projects. Good stuff. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to focus on my health, try to eat healthy. I'm not gonna go crazy. This is, it has to be something sustainable. So I'm just gonna limit my quantities. I don't know if I told you guys, but I lost five kilos already since I've been here. That's a lot. As long as I can keep it up, that's a good thing. When I get back to Taipei after I cycle around the island, I'm thinking, and I'm gonna put this out there, guys. If I do decide to have this procedure done and have my hernia repaired by this place and they decide to help me out with regards to working together on the cost, recovery on that, like, they say about a month before you can do like some sort of heavy, heavy project. So it's a potential that I might have some time that I'd have to rest, but I'm thinking because Taiwan is it's sort of a medical tourist place where people can kind of get procedures done that can't, they can't necessarily get done in their own country as cheaply or as um, quality as they can here. And I'm wondering, because I do have sore knees, I'm wondering if it would be possible for me to contact a stem cell treatment center and maybe get my knees injected before I leave Taiwan. I could do both of those procedures at the same time. If any of you are in Taiwan and know of anybody that does this sort of procedure, and maybe I can contact them. And, you know, any sort of clinic that specializes in that sort of a thing, I would carry that message all the way around the world. And I would be doing it in like a very rigorous way. If a stem cell treatment was to alleviate any pain or aching that happens in my knees, that would be something that that would be a powerful message to anybody interested in that treatment. And I can be sort of the spokesperson for that. So, just throwing it out there. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, now with uh, all that mess out of the way, I'm free. Next time on the Jayo Vlog. I put my foot directly into a, uh, I don't know, fire ant mound or something. So as slow as I think I'm, I need to take it today, I'm going to take it even slower. This could be a bad thing. This could be a real bummer. <laughs>